Have you ever wondered when God will finally have seen enough of the harm that humankind has caused each other and the whole creation that God loves and will finally do something about it? The world's nations just came together for a climate change conference, and they learned how real and how serious this crisis is, and that children in the most vulnerable countries in Africa are already experiencing starvation from famine and drought brought about by climate change, and that those of us contributing most to the climate disaster seem unwilling to change in time to save them. What does God say about the times that we are in now? Jesus said, nations will rise up against nations. There will be earthquakes and famines and wars. This is our reality. It's the pain of our world as our veterans know only too well. It was true in Jesus' day when Peter and James and John and Andrew wanted to know when God would destroy the structures and the systems of this world that fought against God's rule. But Jesus said, don't be deceived. All of this destruction is going to happen. The powerful structures you see around you will come down. But it's not the end. It's part of the birth process. You'll hear rumors, but do not be led astray. People will say they're speaking in my name, Jesus lamented. They will lead many astray. But the end is not coming yet. And beware that no one leads you astray. Some of you, a lot of you here with me, um, are old enough to remember when we came to the end of the 20th century. And all those rumors, remember that about the end of the world? Well, now, too, here we are, so weary from the physical and mental economic, political, emotional, worldwide strain of living under the weight of the pandemic. When will this end? We demand to know. Sadly, much too sadly, we know people who have ended their lives from the strain contemplating and attempting and completing suicides? They're not the answer, my friends. Don't be deceived. There are better options, just ask. If you or someone you know is falling into that pit of suicidal thoughts. Please, please give your pastors, your teachers, your family, your friends the chance to get help with you. This is hard, but this is not the end. God will never give you up. And mysteriously and miraculously and sacredly, God cries through this with you. Going through these hard times can be part of a new beginning. Jesus knew that the buildings in Jerusalem would be torn down in the Roman War. 30 years after his disciples asked him that day about the structures, he knows how this world works and how we are. That none of us really loves God wholeheartedly. We don't really 
love our neighbor. It's more like us to demand our right to choose what's best for me first. Jesus knew at his last supper, even as he said, I give my body and blood for you. That all of his disciples would betray, deny, and abandon him. Incomprehensibly, Jesus didn't abandon us right then. God didn't destroy us when we tried to destroy the Savior of the world. Have you wondered? When God will finally have seen enough of the harm that humankind causes to each other and to this whole creation that God loves and will do something about it? God did do something about it. God took all our sin that causes all the wars and makes us hate and fear and hurt and kill people of different races and genders and orientations and cultures and causes all the selfish damage that we're doing to the creation. God took all our sin, our anger, and nailed it to himself to be crucified and to die rather than destroy us so that we can have the hope of living to see a new day with our children. What appeared to be a terrible end became a new way to live here in this world. And even when it feels most unbearable, God promised to show you the path to life. In God's presence, you will find joy and real happiness that will last forever. There are more for my friends. We have confidence to enter a new life in this world by the blood of Jesus. And even through our hardest times, Jesus is opening up a way for us to live. We can approach God with whatever is burdening us right now. And let God show us how this can actually be like a new birth. God has proven that God is faithful to us. So let's, let's, when we go out of church today, let's have this new, renewed spirit in us, going into this week, going into the rest of our lives, with the faith that God has in you, and consider how you can put aside those irritations, those, those angers, that self-centering that we felt before. And love all the people that God puts into your life. And make a plan to do something this week. Something that will make a difference. Something that will encourage someone else something that can care for this world that God loves so much. You have some great opportunities here, my friends. We are blessed to be able to do these things. We can support Churches United. We can give to the max. You might have read how the bishop is appealing for that right now. The day will come someday when Jesus will return. But we're not going to know when. And until that day, let us determine to live together the way God created us to live. Giving grace and sharing love. Amen.